Good evening, I'm Jerry McIntosh, and this is Community Conversation. Tonight, we're going to address the issue of the Devil's Punch Bowl, a concentration camp that, that was in Natchez, Mississippi, after the Civil War as our main topic, but we have other topics that we're going to address this evening. But uh, first, we'll go to uh, our host, Mr. Bill Snow, who is the author of the great book, From the Project to the Boardroom. We have Dr. Isaac William, who is the uh, great pastor of Greater True Vibe Baptist Church and also the moderator uh, for this area. We have uh, Mr. Grover Brown, who do a multitude of things in uh, investment and economics. And I'm gonna let him talk about that because <laughs> I should have got all that information first. But, uh, and then we have um, Harold McIntosh, who is uh, former educator, principal, administrator, and now the president of the Progressive Black Women. Tara, we go get it. Well, hello, everyone. How are all the hosts doing? I'm well. You're well? That's fine. Okay. Are you ready for a good show tonight? Yes. Yeah, all Let's right. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, I can look at, I always look at Dr. Williams. I can tell he, he's ready tonight, you know. You know you ready? He looks like he's ready to go okay. ahead. So you better and watch you out. <laughs> back. Uh, you're back and, and Grover, you know, you jump in because, you know, on our voices and community wow. conversation, they're, they're really a strong will, strong mind, and you have to jump in with your opinion. So uh, otherwise, you're just sitting there. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. We always, no matter what, I know they're saying that the mask, you know, get rid of that and all that. We're not going to talk about a long time, a long period. But we still need to update our community in regards to what's going on with the uh, vaccines, the, the, the boosts, and also uh, other other things. And Dr. Williams, we'll always give you a chance to talk about that briefly um, uh, and let people know what's going on right now. Dr. Uh, Williams. Uh, thank you so very much, Ms. Carol, and mm -hmm. good evening to our cohorts and colleagues. Uh, very briefly on the COVID front, uh, we want to thank all the community who came out this weekend as we were over at the Delta House. Uh, wonderful environment uh, uh, for people to come out and get uh, kits, uh, get the vaccine and, and other supplies. And so we want to uh, congratulate the community for your support. Uh, here in Escambia County, we're, we're still only at 43% vaccinated. And uh, very much like Dr. Fauci said, we want to be finished with COVID, but he's not sure COVID is finished with us. And so he's still urging the community, go and get uh, vaccinated. If you're not, if you're vaccinated, get, get, the, get the booster. Of all the people who've been vaccinated, only 50% of those have been boosted. And, and very much like uh, uh, in, 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 in over in, in Great Britain, uh, that virus is no respecter of royalty or mm -hmm. residents. Mm -hmm. So, so I want to just argue to those who are listening to me tonight: it's not too late to vaccinate. Okay, great. Yeah, it's not too late. Do you want to just? Say I just something? wanted to say I was reading uh, about the uh, Omicron uh, today, and um, uh, you're saying you know that they are finding heart condition and young people uh, from the age of 20, uh, to, uh, 20 and up, and then brain fog in the same people. And they are wondering what it's gonna be like with the economy in the coming years, um, the unfolding years that, that uh, this virus is, um, is uh, affecting because they are saying, you know, it's gonna be a lot of uh, people who are gonna be sick and not gonna be able to work uh, like they, you know, like they should. It's going to have a detrimental effect on the economy. And also, it's, you know, the infection that is causing uh, with this Omicron is much more widespread than was thought. Uh, but, you know, you still got around 2,800 people dying every day from, from these variants, um, COVID, Delta, and Omicron. So um, we have to 
as much as possible to protect ourselves. And uh, uh, definitely yesterday at the Delta um, Sorority House, uh, we thank them for hosting us mm -hmm. yesterday there for um, making sure that they, we were getting, uh, passing out uh, the home COVID test kits and also the vaccine as well. Uh, we want to thank all of the, the participants that, that worked with us and all of the Delta uh, members and their health committee as well for and all of the radio, the radio station, WBQP TV, um, Karen Hart, the person that, that uh, Miss Fanny Thinking who delivered the food for us. We want to thank all the everybody that was involved yesterday. But do you think, and I'm going to ask this of uh, uh, both of y'all, and, and Grover can get in. Do you think that uh, the people are now, since there's, they've lifted the mask mandate, that we are seeing decline in people wanting masks, wanting the vaccine, vaccines, and wanted, wanting the home test kits? Don't you see a uh, decline in that, uh, Dr. Williams? Do you think that's going to continue or that's going to be a need in, in next month or so? I certainly think that the the mindset of, of many Americans is that uh, we're moving from the pandemic stage to the endemic stage, and and in any news they get that that can kind of help their psyche, said that it's over. Uh, they are jumping on it, but I think they may be premature. Uh, you might recall uh, when the first Omicron, I mean the first uh, coronavirus came out, they said it'd be an hour back in our back window, uh, in our rearview mirror. And then uh, Delta came along, then they said Delta would be in our rearview mirror. Now Omicron came along, they saying now Omicron will be in our rearview mirror. And I'll listen to Dr. Feisen, uh, Feisen today, and he said that very well, six months, we're gonna be back in a pandemic state again, uh, where we're losing three, four, 5,000 people a day. And uh, uh, I, I hope and pray that that we, we're moving into the endemic state and we hear the term endemic it simply means uh, that we're moving out of the pandemic and endemic mean is this is we're going to have to just live with it this is our new norm and so uh people then will make their own decision whether they want to get vaccinated people want to or get boosted people want to wear masks people want to have a vaccine card to come in it's just it's it's like the wild wild west when at in in the endemic state, and and I'm I'm still concerned that too many people lives as Jerry said today between two thousand and and in some places uh, twenty eight hundred people a day. That's just a lot of people dying. And so yes, the, all the governors are dropping the ma the mask mandate, and even from indoors, uh, it kind of may be sending the wrong along. But I want to be optimistic with them. I just think it's premature. Well, Grover, what do you think we should be doing? And you, and and Jerry and Dr. Williams and Bill can and can talk about that. Even though they're not as as um, they're not out there really wanting the math and you know take it off. I really don't need this, and I really don't need that. Uh, what do you think we should be doing? I know, say, say, in Pensacola, we're out there trying to push the vaccines, trying to push the masks, trying to push the. Uh, the vaccinations, but I think it's, it's 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 on hold a little bit. But in the meantime, until like Dr. Williams says, until it rears his head up again, what should we be doing? And still just waiting. Uh, I think definitely you should be continuing, continue to educate, continue to inform, um, because we know that this 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 pandemic, this virus can uh, can go down but then it can also rise. We know that we get to a place where we don't call a lot of attention to what's happening. But as uh, Pastor Williams has just said, there's still 2,000 to 2,800 people who are dying per day. And, and that's a serious number, especially when, it's, uh, when it comes to a specific uh, disease or a virus that is killing people. So that means that the virus is still spreading. And I saw somewhere uh, briefly, uh, that, that even the COVID, uh, this current Omicron vi variant, that there's another variant that has spun off of that. So, you know, we really don't know what to expect. We really uh, can't drop our guard down now. Uh, I'm amazed when I go out 
uh, the, the number of people who do not wear masks anymore, uh, the number of people who are gathering, and we're coming back to large events. But mm -hmm. we all know that from these events, normally uh, all it takes is just a few people in a crowd of thousands to uh, all of a sudden have the, have, the, have the disease and then spread the disease. And then all of a sudden we're back to where we started from. So, I, you know, definitely we got to keep continuing to educate and inform. It's not over yet. And, and when you look at when you look at. If you multiply, and, and this this virus don't take off on Saturday and Sunday, like people might think, oh well, you know, on Saturday and Sunday, I'm not gonna get the, fact. but it don't it don't take it don't know the different in the days. So, and you multiply that, you know, uh, two thousand and sometimes seven, you're talking about at least seventeen thousand five hundred people a week, and then you multiply that times four, you're looking at fifty thousand people per month if it can, can continue on that trajectory and that's in the next two months in other words you have you'll be over uh, a million people that have died from this virus uh because it's a continue it's continuous i know they are doing a lot of undercounting and trying to tap it down to keep the you know people from panicking once they see that million count but you know uh you know it's some people out there well it's only one percent of the population, but do you want to be in that one percent of the population that's dying from this virus? And it's it's one percent that's dying every day. You know, it's a it's people dying every day from the the variants out here. And like Rover says, another one they call the stealth variant that's behind this one, and we don't know what the effect of that one going to be. You know, they, they're saying, oh, you know, just like they're saying, Omicron is mild. Well, it's mild if you've been vaccinated. But if you're not, you're going you're gonna to either be in the hospital on tubulation or you're going to die from it, you know, or you're going to be have long haulers disease where you're going to have heart trouble, you know, possible having strokes, you know, long condition, uh, respiratory problems. All of that is a component of, of um, this uh, Omicron. Hmm. Mm. So, Bill, is there anything um, that you believe PSAs maybe continue, like Grover said, we need to continue. But uh, are the, well, could, should we go to PSA? Should we go actually to the homes, you know, like you do for voter registration and knock on the doors and leave the test kits there? Or, or do we uh, go to resource centers? Do we still have to be active, but in what way? You know, uh, Ms. Mack, I Thank you. you. Am I muted? Am I muted? Oh, you're you're muted now. now. Mm -hmm. Okay. At this stage in, of the game, with Dr. Williams saying that uh, our community is still only at 43%, uh, I think they're doing everything right, but it appears that our communities are dug in uh, with not getting or wanting to be vaccinated. It's a sad fact. I'm not sure at this point, Ms. Mack, what can be done except for to let death run its course. I mean, the vaccine is there. It costs nothing, free mask. And then every time you turn around, they're, they're out doing their thing, no mask. So uh, I, I, I'm really not sure at this stage in the game what can be done to increase vaccination is not too late to vaccinate is a nice theme and model but our community for whatever reason has dug in and has meant it so i'm not sure ma'am i don't know miss Kara, i, I want to just pick it back up where snow is that uh, i think if we just go drop them off at the door they won't use them uh i heard one person said i don't want to know if i got covid I'm like well yeah that's the yeah. i mean they they don't want to test yeah. I know they, unless I get ill, I don't want no. I got it. well. If you got people coming over, don't you want to prevent from getting ill? Uh, you get a you got a group of people coming over. Uh, Berger and I, we were down to City Hall this week, and we were down there. And one of the uh, uh, sponsors of our program, she said she was ill from COVID. Her her stepson went out and brought COVID back in and the whole house got infected. Mm. Now, and, 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 and she said for the first four days, it was scary. She didn't know how far she was going to go down. But then by the fifth day, 
you know, I guess she used all her concoction. She started to come back up and, and she is grateful, but it ain't no joke. I don't, I haven't had COVID. If I had it, it's been very, very, very mild and I didn't know it. And, and I, and, and, and I want to encourage others get boosted. And I'm going to test several times and I'm going to keep on test, testing. Mm -hmm. uh, get the kid test and it could save somebody else's life. I, I'm more concerned of saving other people's life than my own. And I'm, that may sound strange, mm -hmm. but that's where I am. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and you were right, Dr. William, when we went down there, she said she was really, she was all the way down, but she was, said she was really afraid of yeah. what what may happen but, it, but the good part about it she like she said she was she had got the shot she was boosted and so it it, it didn't affect her much as it could have because in other words somewhere she had a weaker weak immune system when she caught it which brought it down even further and and, it, and that's even not necessarily so because they're saying healthy people can uh get brought down with this variant if you're not if you're not um you know, careful, and it depends. And one of the things that we, you know, we were talking about also, people are at least ought to want the testing kit so that if, you know, you got family may be coming in or you got somebody that may be coming to your house, at least you would want them, you know, if, if to say, okay, here, here's something you can mm -hmm. test yourself mm -hmm. or to, if they leave, you can test yourself, you know, yeah. to make sure that you, you are protected and your health is protected as much as possible. And that's something that we have to really, really look at. And what someone has suggested to me yesterday, uh, Dr. William, say, you know, a good thing may be, you know, to catch people after church, uh -huh. uh, you know, when, yeah. when they're coming out of the church, and um, stop, you know, ask them, you know, at least get get the kits in their hand, mm -hmm. even if we can't get the vac vaccine. Oh, I think it was Dr. Greer that, that suggested that, mm -hmm. you know, we might want to do that because uh, we've been going to different places, passing out the kits every every month. So it might be a good thing to catch people coming out of churches if they are in the churches mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Miss Karen, yeah. what do you think we can do? What do you think we can do? Well, you're, you're a brilliant strategist. Well, thank you, Dr. Williams. Well, I, I think <laughs> I'm going to send it by Carlton later, but I ain't going to give him no clue. Yeah. <laughs> Good to have Carlton on. We yeah. missed you, Carlton. Yeah. You really missed Welcome back, my brother. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing changed, though. Don't think that because you've been gone for a while. I think you. Carl was ready. Yeah, I think you have one. But uh, the, idea, the idea that Jerry just mentioned about going to the churches. I think going to the resource centers, I think that's a good idea. Um, and uh, Karen Hartz uh, came up with that suggestion as well. I think mm -hmm. we, we're going to actually have at our meeting discuss uh, locations that we can just continue to pass out the kit. So uh, with that, we're going to move on, you all. Let's talk about uh, the Devil's Punch Bowl. <laughs> How many of you heard about the Devil's Punch Bowl before? I'm, I'm familiar with it. You're familiar with it, yes. and Bill, you have. So, go over, tell, talk a little bit about the Devil's Punch Bowl. Well, the Devil's Punch Bowl, um, as part of the, I guess, the ongoing battle during the, before the Civil War, as well as during the Civil War, um, was that in Natchez, Mississippi, uh, basically, uh, once uh, Blacks have been freed as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, basically, they were corralled. Uh, they were placed on the farm, they were placed into a work mode situation in the most brutal conditions. Uh, and as a result, several thousand died. Uh, it was a brutal, brutal work farm, brutal uh, place where they uh, were, were pretty much had to labor all day. And basically these people would fall uh, over dead and they would bury them and, and everything would move on. So it's, it was a uh, it was pretty much a a concentration camp uh, yeah. whereby they black people were being held in in Natchez, Mississippi. Yeah, and, you know I, I was reading that Natchez once they, you know it was around ten thousand people in Natchez at that time, but with the advent of like you said the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, people were trying to get to the northern states, uh, you know, or get north from where they was at. And so Natchez uh, 
gain a hundred thousand people overnight, mm -hmm. and and uh, they you know they start putting these people in the in our brothers and sisters ancestors in the uh, concentration camp, which is called the Devil's Punch Bowl. And the reason it was called that because water was on one side and all these trees was on the other one, and uh, they the the women they kept in the punch bowl uh day and night because they were they, they didn't see them as as great workers but they worked the, the men to to death really when they come back into camp like Gro was saying if you drop dead they weren't allowed to take the people outside of the camp they weren't even allowed outside of the camp uh the concentration camp so they had to bury them right there and, and walk over the bodies and then there were no, they weren't properly, they, well, they, many of them starved to death. The, diseases um, killed many of them, smallpox small mm -hmm. and all of that. So um, the Devil's Punch Bowl was an atrocious, torturous place that um, people was in in Natchez, Mississippi. And right now, uh, they say some of the, the most peach grow, the, mm -hmm. the peach grow there, one of the most beautiful in the world, but people won't even dare to eat the fruit. Right. Because of uh, where, you know, because of the bodies that it was uh, um, buried on, oh, that grew on top of, yeah, the, the fertilizer, fertilizer, yeah, the fertilizer <laughs> of the bodies, mm -hmm. right, uh, of the trees from the bodies. Right, and they feel like they'll be eating their, their yeah, ancestors. ancestors. Yeah, but But this was done by Union soldiers. Yeah. Right. Uh, we always yeah. talk about the Confederate, but talk about a little bit, a little bit about that, the Union soldiers. Why were they... Why would they do something like that? This is the first uh, uh, camp. You know, we talk about the 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 uh, the concentration camps. You know, but America does not know that blacks were in concentration camps as well. Mm -hmm. So, but tell us about the Union soldiers. What? Why? Why are they a part of that? And I want Carlton to talk about that. Why would the Union soldiers? I thought the Union soldiers were fighting for the freedom of blacks. <laughs> The, weren't the Union soldiers? Well, that, that, was, that was supposed to be the case. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, well, I want to say, number one, it's, it's great to see you all be back. Uh, <laughs> and uh, also, so this is my first time hearing about this uh, this incident. Mm. Uh, it's very enlightening. Uh, you know, there, there are so many of these incidents that occurred all throughout American history that we're not told uh, about, you know, these are only stories that I the word of mouth. You have to find a book, Break a it documentary. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to find. Mm -hmm. You can't even find stories on the internet. You're breaking up, Carl. Mm -hmm. This is a new one for me. This, well, is, this, is, what can, this, this is what I can say. I'm breaking up. Yes, you're Hello? breaking up. Yes, you're breaking up. Hello. You're coming. Breaking up. Yeah, go out and come back in. Go out and come back in. Okay, but uh, um, that 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 was interesting to me because uh, you know you hear about Confederate soldiers and these people do, but when they said Union soldiers, I I was thinking Union soldiers were against. Well, the Union soldiers. Like we have to recognize the Union soldiers was fighting for the union. They weren't really okay. fighting to free black people. Okay. Black people fought and freed themselves. That's what most people miss in this whole thing. The, the black soldiers are the one that, that fought to free black people. The union soldier was just who they were. They were fighting for the, for the union. union. They was fighting for access to the, the, the seas and all of that, that the Southern, uh, the Southern aristocracy had was blocking. Mm. And so it was, it was, it was about slavery, but it was not national necessarily about slavery. Lincoln talked about that in yeah. his, his writing. Mm. So if, if he could free the slave without, without, um, you know, by bringing the union back together, he would, yeah, mm -hmm. he was, yeah, would, without freeing mm -hmm. the slave, yeah, he would do it. So, the, the thing about it, when you read uh, um, uh, Lerone Bennett book, Forced in the Glory, that's what he's talking about. Lincoln through uh, Frederick Douglass and the other brothers that was out there were the one forcing Lincoln to sign 
these bills into law that would free America because Frederick Douglass had fought, pushed him to put black people into the military and to fight. So uh, only only when uh, when the Union was losing the war did uh, did uh, uh, they put black soldiers in to fight against the southern states. And through that, they they realized they were going to have to uh, free. Uh, and Lincoln realized he was going to have to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. But he was uh, neandering about that. He didn't he didn't want to do it. <laughs> I think it's important along that line, uh, Ms. McIntosh, to know that uh, we give Lincoln a lot of credit uh, for the Emancipation Proclamation, and he he deserves, although as Brigier said, he was forced to do it. The very time that he was doing it, he was working with uh, different groups, trying to find out how he can send uh, Blacks back to Africa. He wanted them out of the country. And in fact, a point of history, this very date, this very date, uh, February the 20th, 1922, 100 years ago this day, right uh -huh. there in the same state that you all are talking about in Mississippi, February the 20th, 1929, I mean 22, the, the Senate of the state of Mississippi voted to evict all Blacks out of their state and send them back to Africa and mm -hmm. then they sent the legislation to 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 Washington D.C. for implementation. Oh. Mm. They voted to evict every black out of the state, and it passed twenty-two to nine, twenty-two to nine, I think, or twenty-two to six. I think it was twenty-two to nine. And and then and then Marcus Garvey he agreed with him, and he said, "Now nah, they made it clear that there's no glory, uh, that this land is not designed." for for black people and he wanted them and so then they most racist newspaper that ever had picked up Mar marcus garvey and said this is what black folk want they want to go back to africa and so what lincoln did back in in night i think it was around 1862 he he floated many ideas how to get them back and he eventually got a deal he got a deal to send 500 uh, african-american back and they it, they sent they they sent them back. They wanted to send them back to Panama, mm -hmm. but then but then when they tried to send them back to Panama at the last minute, it was a big uproar saying, "You crazy! These people don't know nothing about no Panama, and and this the only country they know." And they scrapped it. So Lincoln, although he get credit for the emancipation, he he didn't he, he didn't care a whole lot about as well. But the last point I want to make about the Union soldiers, you might know the election of eighteen. Uh, I think it's eight, I mean, 17, the election of 1876, where it was a tie, the first thing they agreed, if they'll let, they'll let the Republican have the presidency, if they remove those Union soldiers out. The Union soldier was only there by the government forcing the Southerners to go by the new law. They weren't really for us, but they said, if you got a right, then they was trying to help Blacks do their right. And they were glad to move out the South as soon as they made that deal. But, but they they also Lincoln also uh, uh, had it so that you know it was a lot of people had to go back to Liberia, what is now Liberia. They they uh, uh, sent a lot of people uh, during that period over well, back to Africa into Liberia. Well, what is known as Liberia. Go that ahead. Was that was part of one of the movements for Black yeah. Africa, as uh, Pastor said. There were there were several movements. There were those right. that were uh, that were created and that were started by Blacks um, mm -hmm. to 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 go back to Africa. And 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 I think they uh, that was one that went back and pretty much uh, that was funded by the U.S. Um, and, and would be considered a colony of the U.S., which it is today. It is today. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, they recently celebrated, I think, a bicentennial, uh, right? Uh, just this past week. Um, but I think, I think the thing that you know was, as Ms. Carroll said, that you know we've always had the perception of the Union Army was there to preserve and protect, uh, you know, these freed slaves. Um, and and on some situations, it all depended upon the divisions that they were fighting in and who the generals were. Yeah. Uh, you know, some when they got to Mississippi. Uh, they were just swamped because got to remember Mississippi was the largest slaveholding state 
and they were just swamped with slaves and they didn't know what to do with them. Uh, and, and so they created these camps. Um, and, and there were other places where they basically could use them in fighting situations, as Dr. Williams said, because you know, if, if the, they were leaving, they, losing, then they wanted that, they wanted that extra fighting or they wanted that service to the the army, but you know it it is we don't know about these things. This this history is is often shield, um, and 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 then you know it, it's funny to me because we're seeing groups that are popping up and talking about hey we want to understand systemic racism, but yet you don't want to say anything about the systemic racism that's occurring at this current time when you look at what the Florida legislature is doing, mm-hmm. but. You know the the brutality of, of the fact that not only did we endure slavery, not only did we endure concentration camps, but then there was another system that we also endured that pretty much was the same thing, similar to these concentration camps, and that happened with peonage, when when basically they would arrest black men for just standing around, and right. and they would throw them into labor camps. These were convicted labor camps, many mm-hmm. times where. Uh, some was, was basically leasing these convicts, a convict leasing system, leasing them to further their profits. So, hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it's terrible. But yes, the Devil Punch Bowl is perhaps one of the most terrible, horrendous uh, tragedy that has occurred uh, during that time period of the civil rights because, pe- you know, African Americans, human, they were dehumanized already from slavery, but they were even greatly humanized, dehumanized when they were thrown into a concentration camp oh. and, 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 and by somebody who was supposed to be coming to be their liberators. Yeah. Yeah. One of the many no. atrocities perpetrated on people of color. Michael Wilkinson on our Facebook stream in reference to returning uh, people back to Africa. He states she can't return stolen goods. <laughs> I like I never heard that. Yeah, you can't return stolen goods. You stole them and now you want to act like you didn't do anything you just took them back. But but what y'all hit on was that blacks were also talking about returning yeah. Yeah, back yeah. To, oh, yeah. to Africa. Uh so now I'm Ms. Talking Karen. about that because you you're talking about whites go back to Africa. But there were blacks that were saying the same thing. We want to go back to Africa. Miss Carol, I, I and in a large sense, I, I think I may have want, been one of the ones that wanted to get on that wagon because hey, I did not like how they treated blacks. You know what I'm saying? I did not like it and I felt if I could get back to the motherland. You know what I'm saying? But but, but I never really really it. wanted to go because I didn't think I would be accepted back there because they thought that we were sell out for being over here so but but I I, I wish they had created about seven states for us in the United States and that that would have been our Africa. Oh, you stated oh. past tense. You said treated black <laughs> Uh, treating, well, yeah, you know, you, you know, you know, in Africa today, they got what they call I don't know if you heard about it, Grove, what they call the fifth column, uh, for people that's in the diaspora. Where if you want to go back to Africa, they got a place carved out for black people to this day. Uh, you know, Jerry Rollins came here many years ago, uh, from uh, and he wanted black people to have dual citizenship to right. Africa, which would give us a state behind our existence here in America, because every other every other people in the country have a state that's back in their their name, their their uh, ancestry and their uh, ethnicity. We they all have that except us. And Jerry Rollins that that was at in um, he was from Ghana, right? Um, yes. Ghana. He, he, yeah, he, he was, was from Ghana. Ghana. Yeah, he was the president at that time. And he came here and the right wing black people in this country so kicked against it and went up, you know, they was all over the media talking about it. I used to watch it, you know, I'm like, why are they doing it? Because Israel have dual citizenship. The people that, that the Jewish people here have dual citizenship in Israel. Other countries have dual citizenship. We are the only, the Canadians have dual citizenship with America, they didn't re- renounce their citizenship. They just said, we want dual citizenship. And we should want the same thing as a nation state to back us uh, where we will have access 
And, and one of the things Jerry Rollins said, we could even participate in the elections over there if we mm. was uh, if we were uh, registered as dual citizens in the, in the country. So it was, it's, uh, but you know, um, which the book that I'm gonna talk about, I, I'm glad you brought it up, Dr. William, the philosophy, I'm gonna recommend this book, the philosophy of Marcus Garvey. Uh, but the thing about it, Marcus Garvey had, had a, a strategic plan that was so great that the government had to shut him down. They had to shut him down. Marcus Garvey was talking about trading. He had ship uh, ships. He, you know, he was talking about moving. Uh, yeah, moving into uh, Africa and trading with the other nations around Africa, Cuba, and all the other places. Even though it was people that that people that looked like him, and that was a uh, fool into setting him up, and um, and the federal government. Um, charged him with except what you call it uh, and money through the mail what you call that uh, uh, uh huh mail fraud and money like what you mean yeah, yeah well he he was a Carlton what well, what is that language Carlton when you take your money yeah, through the mail I thought it was mail fraud uh, yeah mail money. fraud I know you're talking about embezzlement or something. Yeah. Well, well, it was called it was it was mail it was called mail fraud, but it was called something else too. That the language that the FBI used to entrap uh, to because he was you know people were sending him money for the uh, his uh, uh, ship line and the newspaper and all of that. Um, but they call it fraud. But I'm, I'm like Miss Carol. After I thought about that, I ain't going back nowhere. I ain't going <laughs> nowhere. I'm staying right here. But, but, but here, and I'm gonna fight them from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I don't <laughs> sweat, bled, and died. My relative, everything, and work here. I ain't going back nowhere. You ain't sending me nowhere. Right. <laughs> no, but no, but they, the dual citizenship, they, they were giving you a choice. Yeah, That's when they get you over there, they're going to take that choice. Don't you know all these laws they make, hmm. they make them look good just like stand your ground. You, you think stand the ground means stand your ground. You stand your ground until you pull that trigger on a, on, on a, on a light-skinned person. You see what standing ground going to get you. Those laws are for them. Am I wrong, like, Bert Martin? Yeah, I follow I follow people that's that's uh, in um, um, Africa right now that's an American citizen. Uh, as a matter of fact, the one you, person though. that we were friends with that's, that's there now, but they... They got the right to travel back and forth. As a matter of fact, they live in large over there in Africa, you know, <laughs> because you're you're know, in, in, they didn't put, mm -hmm. put in people's psyche that everybody live in the jungle and, and you know, that, you know, you, you know, you, they, 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 the psyche is the Tarzan movie, you know. They got great cities. My granddaughter was over there uh, last year, one yeah, last mm -hmm. year. She was in, in, um, in uh, Nigeria. She was all over uh, in Nigeria, and they, you know, they were there, and she loved it over there because, it, like she was saying, he said, she said it's like Chicago and Detroit and the, the big cities, you know. So it it was nothing. It's nothing like what they have portrayed, you know, like they portray the worst of us. They don't. They wouldn't show people like us to people in Africa on uh, television. Mm -hmm. They show. The slums, mm -hmm. the ghettos, but they—they're they're not the going to show you. In America. Yeah, that same thing in America. They show with yeah. African people. But do you all know that there's a show on Cox? Have y'all turned your channels to uh, to channel three ninety three? Mm -hmm. It's called the Africa Station. It's a station. You don't oh. have uh, uh, cable. I got Direct TV. Well, oh. it might be. It look, might be on look, Direct. Look, Look, Look for it. It's called the African African Sta Africa, Ch Africa mm -hmm. Channel. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there. Brother Jerry, Miss uh, Shirley Baker on our Facebook stream believes the word you're looking for is racketeering. Is that it, Jerry? Well, it said money laundering. No, nothing like that. Uh, yeah, it was something like money laundering. It, it could have been mail fraud. I, it might mail have been fraud, mail fraud. fraud. But uh, um, that's the but way they normally get you when they're going to charge you with racketeering. They mm -hmm. get yeah. mail fraud. Am I right, bro? bro, bro uh, they racketeering came from uh, mail fraud, and then they get you for racketeering, and then they treat you up under the RICO law. Mm -hmm. This way, they can put take all your possessions. They do everything. They they gonna they gonna really skin you up when they when they bring those charges against you. Let me ask you about that. Could be wrong. You the lawyer there. I don't want to get out of my lane. 
right. Well, I, I'm, I'm just going to put out there, I'm, I'm not a criminal lawyer, so I'm not going <laughs> to okay, provide okay. any information on that. Yeah, that's more of a criminal lawyer. But I am a community lawyer. I do want to say something real quick because I wasn't able to finish what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do want to raise something. And I, I, like I said, I'm happy to be back on. I'm sorry I missed the last few episodes. But did y'all talk yet about how recently there was an article that came out about a week or two ago talking about how Native American tribes that had enslaved Black people back yeah. in the day yeah, are now providing reparations yeah. to the descendants of the black people that they enslaved. Now, I didn't, re I knew about that. I didn't know that when Native Americans were kicked out of the South and they went on, you know, the Trail of Tears. They to took Oklahoma, the blacks with them. They took the blacks with them as slaves. Yeah. I didn't know that until I read this article and that blew my mind. And so I just want to use that as a reference when I'm answering the question that Carol asked me earlier about what I thought about the union in regards to uh, the devil punch, the uh, devil's punch bowl. And I think that's important to go back to that because I think the answer I'm gonna give is gonna be the crux of the answer to everything that we're talking about today. If it's COVID, if it's policing, if it's racketeering and Marcus Garvey, at the end of the day, okay, what it comes down to is that black people are not treated and not, not treated well and are not seen with respect in this country by anybody. Amen. Amen. American, anybody. Okay? And even black. And, and even black people. Thank you. And at the end of the day, that's why it's so important to do what Marcus Garvey was really trying to do. And it doesn't have to look like what Marcus Garvey did, right. but it's the essence of what he was doing, which yeah. was what I'm trying to do with the work I do. Community empowerment. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Community empowerment. Yes. It's all about empowering our people that's, and that's ourselves. Mm -hmm. I said it all the time. And do what we need to do. And one thing I'll say about Africa, because I, I agree with Jerry and Carol on it, I actually have a lot of friends that I went to college with who are Black, who grew up in America and are now living in Ghana. And they're doing very well. Mm -hmm. Some of them are celebrities in Ghana and entertainers. Yeah. And they were not like that in America. So what I've heard from a lot of my friends is that in particular Ghana, and there's also other countries like even Kenya yeah. is opening up in East Morocco. Africa, Nigeria, of course. You know, everybody knows about Nollywood. Nigeria has, I think, the third biggest film industry in the world next to Bollywood in America. You right. know, so a lot of people don't know that, but there's a lot that's been happening in African countries for centuries. The fact that there are cities in Africa that Black people in America don't even know about is right. mind-blowing, but that's mm -hmm. a fact. All right, so all I'm trying to say is that what Marcus Garvey was talking about, what MLK was talking about, what Malcolm X was talking about, what the Black Panthers were talking about, the list goes on. To this day, Black Lives Matter, what everybody's been talking about is empowering our people. Oh, okay. Because if we keep on looking to white people, to Native Americans, That's to the it. U.S. government, to mm -hmm. come and save the day, to President Biden. That's right. I'm saying to Dr. Williams, I'm going to get it. Started. You shot the first round, bro. That's right, I did. I did. I did. Listen, it was either going to be me or Putin at this point. So I, I, I think we're better. I think it's better that it's me than him, all right? So either way, even Biden, we cannot expect that these people are going to come and save the day for us. We have to save our own day. So that, that's all I wanted to say. But, but uh, if Dr. Williams brought something up earlier. He he was saying uh, about the 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 African uh, uh, people that the people who live over in Africa have a different uh, view of African Americans, the people that live over here in America. Um, do y'all think that it's it's a negative viewpoint or is it positive? You know, from my stance, I've heard uh, a, a person that, that was from Africa, she came over and we were talking and she was talking as though it was a negative to be an African-American, that you have lost a, a lot of of your, uh, what word am I? Africanism. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good but, word. But, but, but what do y'all think about that? Let me let me run my side of it. Let, let me... It's many, you know, it's a way that people have been shown 
that you know when when you show nothing but negative negativity to the rest of the world see, it's not just going to africa it's going to europe it's going to asia it's going to to what is called the middle east which is nothing but africa but it's going around the world all of this negative they show of us and that's why people feel the 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 the, the india People from India can come here and put business in our community and yet disrespect us because that's what they've been shown. This is how they've been raised on through television, through the medium that they see about us. And so doing this, it is up to us to raise our level of uh, interest in the world because of what we are doing tonight. What we are doing tonight is exposing and uncovering some of the, not, not just the atrocity, but the evilness of the media and what it has done to us, uh, starting with uh, the birth of a nation that was shown as, as, a, as a president had it shown in the White House, which done more damage to black people, to me, than even the degradation, the, the viciousness of slavery and all of that, because when we were coming out of slavery, we came out building cities, we came out building school, we came out building institutions where we could worship. Uh, we came out, uh, you, know, uh, we, you know, singing and, and making a new life and making a new way, bringing a new culture to America, which we did. And you know we we brought jazz, we brought the blues, we brought uh, the rock and roll. All of this was, was is a part is who we are. The inventions, the great inventions that America survive and thrive on to this day, came from us. But none of that has ever not only was it not shown to the world, mm -hmm. it was not even shown to us who are black in America. Well, we're just and this is why. That. We, it is so important that we teach our own history mm -hmm. so that we will have the pride in ourselves, that we will have the love for self, to, and that we can counter anything that anybody throw at us by our, by our language and our uh, knowledge and wisdom that we have of ourselves from, from ages gone back. And, and look to our ancestors mm -hmm. for that, uh, that savior that we are talking about, Carlton. Yeah, it's going to take, we're going to have to be the persons that we are looking for. Dr. I think, I think Ms. Carroll, uh, mm -hmm. to add on what Bridget right. said, uh, I think the reason that our ancestry uh, people don't really like us because we, we call ourselves looking down on them. Blacks think they are better than Africans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, so we we got over here. We, we as Jerry said, we watched all the movies of how anytime you ever see a white America portray Africa, they they want to talk about AIDS. They want to talk about uh, the wars that are going on between them. They want to talk about the poverty. They want to talk about all the diseases. They don't they don't show all the greatness where it was out of Africa to where where the great wonders the pyramid everything was built that that's that's that lasts through centuries africans did it and that's what africans are really doing in america we are the ones who are building america and as Jerry said we are the soul of america black is the soul we are the country right. when black people cry out mm -hmm. the in a uniform voice the whole world will listen we are the conscious, and so and so. Yeah, we could be we could be advocating for them to do more for the African countries. We could be doing more for them to stop the wars that they start in the African countries in Britain when they colonized them and things. We could do more, but we really just trying to survive ourselves over here right now. And and they see us. They see the celebrities. They see the Michael Jordans, the the LeBron James. They see the uh, Oprah's and they believe that we could do more and we probably could, but we're trying to survive this systemic and systematic uh, racism, just trial that's going on right now in Georgia. Those three guys on trial, they got them on tape saying that um, the world would be better if they kill every black in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Samuel X on our wow. Facebook stream says, I feel most 
uh, Africans look down on Blacks in America. That's America mm -hmm. with the KKK in it. I believe it's conditioning to keep us divided by, by a common enemy. Otherwise, right. they probably would be allowed in the country uh, that became citizens. But uh, Sister uh, Angela Kay on the stream says, we have not embraced our culture and history as we should as Black people. Some right. have tried to make changes to fit into society. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the things that we have to, well, this now this has happened in the Carter administration. Zygmunt Brzezinski said that Black people in America and the Black people in Africa, we can never let them come together. Mm -hmm. This was a Democrat that we had, we voted for Jimmy Carter, but this was the uh, um, the, the American second, was he the Secretary of State? Yeah. That's Joe, that Joe Scarsborough wife, daddy. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yes, yeah, yeah. Mika Brisky, her, her wife, I mean, his wife, daddy, Zygmunt uh -huh. Brzezinski, said that we can never let Africans and Africans of America come together. Well, because, we will conquer the world. We, yeah. we, do you know some of the smartest people yeah. I ever encounter in my life? are Africans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's to this day, when we were living in Tallahassee, in my neighborhood, they had these guys who was PhDs. And so, uh, these guys were phenomenal. I mean, they, they were way smarter than us, and they had to learn another language. They, uh, they, they, they are brilliant. Well, who are they? When they come to America, who are they with? But see, are they in the black community when they come to America? I don't know where they at. I mean, when they visit, I'm talking about when they visit, they I come know. over here and visit. Who are they visiting? I don't know that, Miss Carol. I know oh, I didn't, where know. my daughter you lives know. out in Houston. They are they are very much a part community. of the African American community. They they are every oh, okay. just like every other house is an African living in their community, and they are very nice. Oh, I, mean, I didn't know that. They, they okay. are good people. They come across when when I when I visit with my daughters, and they and this is a fairly well off community. They come and bring you meals, and they they'll do everything because they love black people, at least the ones that I'm seeing out. But I was kind of half scared of Africans myself because I heard them African to kill you. <laughs> let, let me say this. Go ahead. Let me Grover. say this. I think I think that, you know my Go ahead, my conversations um, through the State Department, which offers a chance for visiting nationals to come to different and, and tour different cities. Uh, those that come and always want to know how how do we do micro enterprise. Uh, and, and CEI does microenterprise, and I've had a chance to sit down and talk to them. And I, you know, the biggest the biggest issue is that the reason why there's a void between uh, what Africans uh, from the from the native land think versus that and their feelings about um, African Americans is the fact that you remember America is held as a, as the land of opportunity, and we are here in the land of opportunity. Uh, they visit, they come, and they take advantage of everything that's here, everything that they don't have at home. That's why, uh, you know, uh, you have a large Nigerian population in Houston. I had instructors um, in college there in Baton Rouge who had brothers on medical clinics, uh, was mad as him, at him because he became a, a lawyer and a professor and didn't go to med school. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that... Uh, they take advantage. They take advantage of everything. They'll work an eight hour job. They'll take 18 hours of, of, of classes. They take advantage, they labor, they work hard to build things for themselves. I, the biggest issue is here, number one, um, we can't organize, we, we can't come together. <laughs> Uh, we don't take advantage of every opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they're throwing against you. Uh, mm -hmm. Our ancestors took advantage of it. Um, and, and they begin to, they, we got to build. We have to build for our own. And, and so that's one of the biggest reasons why there's animosity and there's tension. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that they dislike, you know, uh, African Americans is the fact that you're here. You're you're in the land of opportunity. I like that. You know, are you taking advantage of that land of opportunity? And yes, there is. There's always been a misnomer about what was there in Africa. Uh, you know, come on, seriously. You know, <laughs> nobody has ever wanted to credit the African with the the invention of science. Nobody has mm -hmm. never wanted to credit them with the fact that they looked in the stars a long time ago and yeah, the stars, and they mm -hmm. gave us all of our religion. 
Nobody mm. has never wanted to talk about the fact that, you know, it was the African who pretty much set this world in order. And everyone has uh, basically taken from the African uh, the way that the world operates and the way that empires are built. Nobody's mm. ever wanted to give credit to the Black yeah. for that. Khalid Lewis but, on our Facebook stream says, Black self-hate is approved by Pinocchio, Pinocchio and them. Uh, but Samuel X. Clark says, Philip Emigdali is a Nigerian computer science and mathematics and is the father of the internet, a little black history that we will touch but, on. But, a but at the same time, but at the same time, you know, that, that riff there is there. And, and we need to be doing more to basically, you know, bridge that gap. You yeah, know, like it, you when we sit here and talk about e economic development, mm -hmm. uh, their their economies are booming. They're they're right. in they're in the bus. And instead of us sitting here and, and fighting Boom. about this, uh, you know, extraction that's being basically this economic extraction that's happening, that's that's, that's closing our communities, that's widening the wealth, wealth, wealth gap. You know, maybe we need to take some journeys over to Africa to see how can we do trade. Uh, you know, bro, but one of the things that, that's happening with, with that is, like I said, you go back to what Zygmunt Brzezinski said. You can't let the Africans and the Africans of America get together. Even in your in the own country, what did the, the uh, Jager Hoover say? You can't ever have another uh, Messiah-like uh, individual like Martin Luther King. They That, that development has pushed us from the time that we built cities in this country that were burnt to the ground, that all the way up to, well, 1975 when they bombed mood in, in Philadelphia from airplanes, this has been going on for years. It's not that they are any smarter than us. No. What it is, they don't have the people standing in their way in that country. The people want development. They want their, their, their people to be engineers and doctors and all of that because it's going to help build the country. In America, they put stumbling blocks in your way so that you, you know, even though we have overcame so many obstacles and that, that, the, that the world has placed in our, in our front door, when we walk out the triple, we have found a way to ease through the cracks and get and to move into into this society in ways that nobody else could have ever done. But when you come here, you come here with already a preconceived idea of what black people are alike. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference when, when you don't have anybody standing in your way. Haiti, right here on our border, Haiti was, uh, is a great nation with all of the stuff that, uh, that, that, that uh, places like Africa have. But America, France, and Great Britain still got their foot on the neck of that country, so it, it cannot survive. Clinton pushed it, you know, they put dough, they took the banana companies and, and they had to give up their rice and, and sell it for less than what, what is worth to this day. Not Clinton did a year later say, oh, I, you know, I apologize for doing that. But you didn't reverse what you did. You ain't trying to get it reversed. You know, all of those things are, are now happening where we could have did trade with Haiti. We could have did trade with Jamaica, you know, and trading with each other. But every time we try to get, uh, every time we have moved in this country, they have blocked us, just, not just in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, and Rosewood, but in, in, in Texas, in Chicago, in Elaine, Arkansas, in every state, Carolina, all of these states where we moved and, and when we came out of slavery, we came with the skills. Not that we didn't have them before we went in there. They brought us here because we had built civilization already, but they put us in, you know, lately in under slavery to build their communities. And then when we built it and was competing with them, they burned them to the ground. Mm -hmm. I want to add what yeah. you said with Jerry. Mike, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Brett. So. Michael Wilkins says the one that all blacks aren't crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I want to add very long what you said, but Jerry, all of the strong, brilliant, especially the male, even the women that were leader uh, coming out of these various movements, the government systematically uh, uh, and consistently 
destroyed them or assassinated them. And so they went out to kill out all the leaders. And so, and they were sending a signal to everybody else. If you think you're going to represent and help bring your people up as a whole, you're going to, you're going to die. They're going to assassinate your character, which lead to my second point. I had a book. I just gave it to my nephew to read. It got all the inventions that blacks made in America, but the white man took, took it and patented it and got credit for it. With most of the inventions that made America what it is today, it was invented by a black person. And a lot of people don't know that. They wouldn't allow you to patent. If you try to submit to get a patent, they'll block you, they'll steal it, then they'll patent it. And it, the internet right now, I was reading it the other few days ago, the internet was invented by a black man. But mm -hmm. no one knows that. Do you know how much money that yeah, they are, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that blacks are, are great inventors. We we sit and we think of something. You know, I invented something, but I didn't have enough sense to get it patented. Do, do, do. Well, I ain't gonna tell y'all my invention, but but yeah. but watch this. Black, <laughs> I see for God is you full of crap, man. But, but, but watch this. Uh uh when we invent, but they don't give us the raw to send the revenue so we could take that money and invest and empower our community. Whatever we try and do, as Jerry said, it's just so many obstacles, but I ain't no way tired. I ain't weary. I ain't worn. I'm going to run on a while longer. We're going to get there. As Martin Luther King said, we're going to get there, and we're going to get there as a people. We may not all get there, but we're going to get there. We're going to talk about some inventions uh, uh, at the end of the show and actually read some inventions off and so that everybody would know and everybody could, could you know, could uh, talk about one or two inventions because we need to do that on every show. There's so many inventions that people don't know about. Um, but uh, I'm going to let uh, Grover get in and then I want to talk about uh, Black History Month and, and the, the removal of it. But, but, you know, let me finish with what I was saying. They mm -hmm. see the opportunities here, but then they have to come and then they learn our struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our struggle, you know, yes, there's opportunity, but then there's a struggle uh, that we fight a system that basically contracts when it's time for us to step up. Right. Uh, you know, we battle. Uh, and, and then, you know, if you look at our history, and, 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 you know, for example, you know, not wanting to even make sure history is being taught correctly in our schools. Uh, so you're crippling not only our, our children, but also the children of other races as well. And so, um, you know, it, 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 I don't, how can I size this down without going too far? Uh, the, the fact that there are several dynamics that, that are going on that basically uh, bleed our community, that basically uh, put us in positions to where uh, we are, we're in a bad spot. When you look at the wealth gap and we're trying to pretty much close this wealth gap and, and we're saying, you you know, I, I hear all the time, you know, hey, we need home ownership. We need to start a business. We need to do more savings. Uh, and, and, and we can do all of those, but that's not going to close our wealth gap. Let's just be realistically. It's the fact that we were prohibited by law from taking advantage of so many opportunities from being able to purchase a home, from being able to work on jobs, from being able to uh, have uh, different occupations. We were prohibited for a long time. And so now as we as we try to move forward, you're not going to going to close that wealth gap anytime soon. And the only way to close it is through reparations. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that, 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 that uh, yeah, so we need to talk about reparations a little bit more. Yeah, so y'all write that down, uh, Bill, you write it, write down what is your topic that come up that we need to discuss. But uh, I heard that um, this might be the last Black History Month that we that we have a chance to actually it's just just a speculation because of the backlash and CRT and all that stuff there and feelings that uh, they might try to take uh, the Black History Month away and say it's not necessary. Um, 
And y'all should know my feelings about it because we don't need them to have an actual uh, to declare a month. We can do ours uh, 365 days out of the year. They don't have to. They don't have to tell us or give us permission to do it. But what do y'all think about uh, them actually thinking about saying, "Well, we don't need Black History Month." And, and will the blacks will the blacks just stop what they're doing, or, or will we continue to to honor uh, February or or all year round ourselves? What'll happen? I want to get Brooke Carlton after Brooke Carlton. I I want to shoot back because well, I know where he's gonna go with well, it. Let, let, let me say this: okay. Day didn't start Black History Month, <laughs> right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, how can you stop something that they did not start? Right. Uh, the the and, celebrating and, you know, the, the Black History Month celebration, and, and that, that that's a that's a that they didn't start that, so we did that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. yes. That, was, that was Carter G. Woodson. <laughs> yeah. So they can't stop. <laughs> yeah. Like they think they can because they they saying that they're gonna well, try to. Well, they they have they have shot their own self in the foot by by raising the issue. And now everybody is is they got to come face to face with it. And black people now are beginning to realize, wait a minute, hold up. If you don't want us to learn this, I better learn this. And it's all over the internet. It's on, you know, you got people on TikTok, you got people on, on uh Twitter, Facebook that's talking to, you know, that's that's expounding the knowledge that need to be out there, even though it's 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 not in um it's not in, in detail that it should be. You got psychologists and doctors and all of that who are talking about it now. So that's that's a good thing. I'm yeah. glad they did raise the spectrum of CRT because they didn't know what they were talking about anyway. What they did for, for to make it bad, it turned out to be a good thing because we're gonna be doing this 365. Every community, mm -hmm. every community show, That's every right. community conversation show is gonna be on black history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we may may be aware of since this movement to try to to stifle uh, awareness, black awareness, HBCs across the nation have risen to standards they never in the, in probably in the last 75 to 100 years. More permanent scholars in our community coming out of high school, they are choosing to go to a HBC now versus trying to go to Harvard or go to go to Columbia or go to any of those Ivory League college because it is it, something about when you go there, you get that black experience that will allow you uh, to connect for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so they may try and stop it right now, uh, they're just up in the end. And, but I tell you what I, 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 I thought about, and I don't know anybody this, I ain't gonna jump ship yet. I wanna, I like to be a little controversial. You know who, who hurt us more than anybody else lately was Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, y'all don't go back to Hillary Clinton. Y'all. <laughs> no, no, let me tell you oh, why. Hillary. If Hillary had won that election, all those racist people that Trump put on the Supreme Court who who constantly we would have had three more people. Why all this stuff. So why are you he, going to Hillary? He say, he say, he's saying if she hadn't lost and if she hadn't oh. lost, not that she did. I'm saying or, if she or, had not lost, or if it wasn't stolen, uh, stolen, right? If, yeah, if yeah. she had got <laughs> into right. office, that's what I was trying to say. She if she if if she had gotten into office, a uh, a lot of this stuff will be we wouldn't be dealing with this because we would have. The, the law of the land on our side. Now these people up there, they are turning the law against us. The and so now we got to fight this side. all over again. The law of the land ain't never been. <laughs> At least it'd have been, it, it would have been somewhat on our side. <laughs> the law of the land ain't never been on our side. Hey, Michael Wilkinson says if they try to stop Black History Month, that would be the straw. Khalid Lewis says Pinocchio and them tried to contain <laughs> Black knowledge. Uh, but the black genie is out of the bottle now. Uh, Samuel X says that uh, white people, I believe, will not try to stop Black History Month, but to capitalize off of it and control the narrative. Of course. They try to control the, the narrative. narrative. Yeah. That's what they're going to well, that, And that's, that's what we are saying. We have to control that narrative from, from this day forward. We 
who are, who are wise enough and understand what is going on have to expose and then explain to our people what what is going on because that's what that's what Tammany is. Just like they capitalize, they, you know, only thing you heard about Martin Luther King is I have a dream, but they, you know, it became a, a national holiday for, for capitalism, not for black people. <laughs> Did you all see the, the movie, which was out of while back, Hidden Figures, uh, in regards to- uh, The three the, computer ladies, they, they were walking computers. Uh, you <laughs> know, I think people, <laughs> Did not really grasp the the power and that the was in the depth of yeah. that movie because you realize that these women were actually called human computers. Mm-hmm. They're the first human computers. Mm-hmm. And what does it take to be a computer? You, you know, think about it. They, they, you know, they they were they were doing what computers do now: mathematics. Algebra. They was. I mean. They. I mean. Uh, the, you just name it. They were. They had the the knowledge and the wisdom and the backup. I be in. I. I. What is, IBM, uh, IBM came later. Came later. But the 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 women were called human computers. Although when you think about it, Carol made a good point. They still made them a thing. Yeah. Rather than these was geniuses that they had. Yeah, they were things. Yeah. Uh, and 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 we've got to really we think about where, where did that knowledge go? You know why why now are all of our children put in ESC classes? Why now are we all thought of as being uh, slow learners or something's wrong with our brains and all that? Why why now when back then? I mean you were human computers, and that means you had a, a, a to think you had a brain and and, and knowledge way beyond anyone well, you, where did that go only two where did it go only only two percent of the teachers in school in in school are black male i think around 90 90 some percent of the school system is white somebody said to me once said jews will never have sent their children to be taught by nurses <laughs> so we are the only people on the planet that where somebody can can destroy the mind of our children and want them in a school where they shouldn't be in the first place. Because now you are teaching them how to compete and they're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. They're not going to do that to teach them how to compete. When, when I was going to school, when I started uh, school, it was all black. And in our class, there was only two guys that really had a difficult time learning. Everybody else in the class, they they were able to learn because we had an all black teacher who cared, invested in us, and they saw to that, saw to it that we learned. Now Alvin Faison, I remember his name, you know, one other guy, I forget his name, but those two guys, we had one male teacher named named Mr. Britt, he had a strap in his coat pocket. He put in his little coat pocket right here. And he'll come and he'll stand up. He said, bro, Faison, how much is two plus two? And he just couldn't get it. And he'll hit him. Call it. He, they used to beat us to make you learn. They 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 insisted that you learn. But Alvin Faison, Alvin and his other guy, they just, I felt sorry for him. They just couldn't get it. But But now, they got the, they, they didn't have no such thing as this ESP and all of this Everybody can learn, but they don't want to teach our children, and they don't care. And, and for the most part, a lot of the, the white teachers are afraid of black, especially black, black males. They are afraid of them, so they ain't going to teach you. They just throw you over in that room and go on back to your mama, get some written uh, and whatever, and get on, on, on your program. We ain't thinking about you, and that is sad. But, but, but when did we change the concept? You know, young kids, I'm retired from when I was in the system. Uh, did not want to appear smart. You know, they'll, they'll, they they wanted to uh, uh, appear slow because they didn't want the other kids to think that they were nerds or they were smarter than them. When did we start regressing to not wanting to appear smart, Grover? Um, you know, I, you know, and, and there's some kids right now that believe, you know, I don't want to answer that question. I don't want to do this because, you know, I want to fit in. 
Well, I think that 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 peer pressure. Um, I mean, I don't know when it started. I can't necessarily say when it started. Uh, I think that that has, you know, been there because, you know, you want to be cool. You want to be accepted and you would rather um, be with that crew that looks cool, that's accepted and it has has that's getting all the uh, prop, if I can use that old word. But uh, look at it now, though, with the issues of um, many parents taking advantage of having their child label uh, because there is a there is an income incentive behind that. Now we, we must take that into consideration as well. That's that's, that's the over. We we're willing to take money and finances, uh, uh, dumb down. And, and dumb down our kids, or just make make them uh, have a label on them. So you're saying that's what we're 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 willing to do? Well, I have. You know, you I, I, well, I can't say about what we're willing to do in everyone, but it's a known fact. Um, that there have been there have been uh, parents who have requested their child mm. be placed uh, right. get an IEP. We, wow. we have an educator on our Facebook stream that says she has a fourth grader who was acting up in class refusing to read and learn, and uh, uh, she was told his mom is trying to put him on disability. But brother Joseph Glover says to answer your question, Ms. McIntosh, about the knowledge, where the knowledge went. In his opinion, suppression and severe trauma. But Khalid Lewis says, the wolf will teach the lamb to be ignorant and nonviolent. There's so many. So like I said, you know, we, it's easy to sit here and have a in conversation. My estimation when we integrated, because now notice, when we were all in the, in the all black school, everybody mm -hmm. learned. Then when they integrated us, these same guys, and it, we have we have equal probably guys and girls in the class. Now, when we get to the white, for whatever reason, they didn't want they didn't want to embrace the white person teaching them, and the white person didn't want to teach them, and so then so then what what happened? We became jocks, and I was one of the unique one where I could be. I was smart. I I never had to take a book home in my whole uh, matriculation of school. I can sit in class and I can listen and I can get almost a hundred on every test you put before me. I just had that ability. If I, I may study just a little bit, but for my friends and all of them, they had to stay up all night studying to regurgitate and things like that. And so, and so it was easy to go be a jock and be cool than to be, to be, uh, uh, be, to be studious. And so then they don't want to learn. I ain't, I don't want that. All they just do enough to get, and, and it became cool. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta be, you can be a geek or you can be a jock. The girls like the jocks. The girls like the But we've got to re reverse that. We've got yeah. to change that. I think it's it, it, it's coming a little bit, uh, but we've got to reverse that concept, that mindset, uh, some kind of this. way. Let me say let, let me say this. Let me say this. You know, that was and I and I, I agree with Dr. Williams. Uh, but as my daughter would tell me, that was back in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. And that was that was the fact. A lot of things have such change, since changed. Our society changed. Uh, our family structure changed. Mm -hmm. uh, our neighborhoods changed. Uh, you know, segregation, desegregation. Uh, we were able to move into other communities. All, all, so many things changed in our neighborhoods and in our communities. And therefore our schools change, uh, where we taught, who taught us, uh, how we learn. And, and, and there are so many dynamics uh, that we don't even have time to talk about that mm -hmm. goes into, um, I guess, you know, getting what we have because we have to take, take in the economic factors there and taking the downward trend uh, to what, what many of these kids, you know, uh, what they're dealing with today. You know, come on, some of the problems and issues that many of these children are dealing with, uh, you know, is, is amazing. You got 12 year olds uh, being parents to their five and six year olds. Uh, okay. You know, they're dealing with, many of these kids are dealing with adult problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, problems that normally that you would, we, back in our day, we didn't, you didn't have until you were adult. So, you know, several things have changed and it's, it's become a challenge. And, and so, 
you know, if if there was a right way to do it or could can do it, and I know there are some strategies that will work. Uh, the problem is they just need to be employed. And, and that's one thing is to learn different perspectives and how to teach children from different cultures. We have, to realize, we, have, we have to realize that, and I've said this a, a couple of times too, that the schools are designed to teach academics. They're not designed for social development. And, 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 and some of the issues that are going on, personal issues in the, in the children's lives, like you were saying, Grover. And so they're, they're not doing the best in the academic part, but the social development part of it, I think our community need to, to work on it because that, that has nothing to do with the school. And before you, before you can expect high academics, you've got to look at the, the what dynamics they're going through, what issues they're going through, their mindset, self-love, the financial part, all that has to be taken on and be responsible, um, uh, uh, responsible looked at by the community. And until we do that, and I think we've dropped the ball on that. Well, we've dropped the ball, the community has dropped the ball. Well, Grover came, Grover made a good point. And Dr. William, when we were growing up, you were right by the belt, but they didn't understand psychology back then, you know, so that was the only thing they knew that that came out of slavery. The the belt, the stick, you know, that mm -hmm. that that was a slave master's mentality. Right. But, you know, they didn't know about uh, uh, dyslexia, which which I was. They didn't know about, uh, you know, how how pe some people learn through through hearing yeah. other through touch different of, of different ways different you know ways all, in, into the mm -hmm. into, even mm -hmm. to this day because you don't have these people deployed in the school system that can tell the teachers or the or the teachers have time to help them with some portions of their social skills but Gary, can it, i ask it, you a question though yeah let me let me finish this uh, the, the trauma <laughs> and ptsd that many of them are faced with think about this Children are saw children killed in the streets and all of that. And like Bro was saying, you know, you're dealing with children now, young people now that have to deal with stuff that we never even saw or uh, dealt with until we were grown, you know, or, or you know, later in life, we might have heard something about a friend or some getting killed or been in a car accident or something, but not on the level you see now each and every day. Um, yeah, this is why it's so important that if they do make it through school, that they go to a black institution where they can build those relationships, where they can be nurtured into knowledge, nurtured into understanding who they are, to be able to have those contacts where, you know, that they can have that person to person uh, uh, love and concern and, and the, the self development in these colleges. And I'm glad that uh young black athletes and all of them are going back to these black colleges uh but they are going to learn as well as as to be athletic and that's what that's that development yeah. that they need they, uh, they didn't know anything about psychology uh uh physiology uh, so to, so to speak our parents but they know they told you when you take your little butt to school you best not act up. You better do what that teacher tell you to do. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't, when you get back home, I'm gonna bust your butt. And guess <laughs> you, 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 you remember that. But you can't do that anymore. Yeah, you know, right. They you know, took that law, law against you. Now you got to do it. Now, wait, you can't say I'm going to say that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll you you be in jail. But, no, I'm, but <laughs> you all know where that came from, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. we know. Yeah. But, you, there was no problem with you disciplining your children till it became integration. As right. long as right. segregation, you discipline your children. And notice now. Uh, those, those teachers didn't know about PTSD. They didn't know about uh, the different uh, learning disabilities. But I guarantee you, the student learned. Yeah. Everybody in my class learned. Oh, so they oh. weren't going to play with you. You Did you learn, Brad Jerry? 
Yeah, I learned, but but it, it was it, you know. Even though you had a you had a problem, I had, learned, I, had I had a learning disability. And nobody, learn, I didn't know about it until I was you know. Didn't know about until it, I was grown. I, 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 I noticed it. I said, you know, you know, you know, you know, I noticed you know, it. He didn't know about it until he got married. And as a educator, I looked at him. I said, Have you ever been on Ritalin? <laughs> You need some Ritalin. Oh, not on Ritalin, are you asking the student? <laughs> oh, hey, you realize I said, you know, at, uh, yeah. at early, if I had been diagnosed, no, I ain't been on no Ritalin. You were, no, you I ain't were, never been on no I ain't on nothing. He he would be classified as one of those hyper uh, active. <laughs> Student, so I diagnosed so man, Jerry, myself. But, it, Jerry. but anyway, uh, we have to deal with uh, the conflict resolution. Our kids now don't know how to kind of. Uh, um, we had a, a situation mm -hmm. with that earlier that we mm -hmm. uh, that we were talking to a young man about, uh, and and then we need to 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 talk to our kids about higher order thinking skills. Mm -hmm. You know the thinking higher order thinking skills. You know one of the things that that uh, I find that we don't talk to our, our, our young people. We talk at them, we don't talk to them. And so we've got, that's gotta be a whole new show bill on, on young people, because we've gotten off on, but we need to talk about uh, uh, our young people. But uh, going back to, and I'm gonna get off of that because that's a whole show right there, because our time is short. And I want to, and there's three things that we need to talk about. We need to talk about supporting the Supreme Court uh, uh, nominee. Um, you know, he has three people that he's, he's really looking at now. And it shouldn't matter which ones he, he, he's looking at, whichever one he chooses, we should support. Right. Do you think that's gonna happen, Carlton? Carlton is frozen. Carlton is frozen. Yeah. Okay. No. You think, does anybody think that's going to happen? I, well, I hope it's happening. I think we're going to support whoever uh, Biden chooses. I don't want, we shouldn't yeah, have any kind well, of. Well, all the, every one of them is super mm -hmm. qualified, more qualified than probably anybody on the court. Everyone that's, that's, that's uh, been, that has the potential to be nominated is more qualified then you know class time or gorgeous and all the rest that last lady they put on these are some of the, the people ain't never sit on a court but they they are they are on the supreme court of the united states and so yeah you you got people that's going to be um i mean you got these ladies that that's uh possibly be nominated no matter which one it is we should uh circle a wagon around her because they're gonna go after her with everything they got uh to destroy mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. whoever, whoever she may be. And so we can't let them, we can't fall. Mm -hmm. We can't, we can't fall for this stuff that we should have picked this one. I'm not voting because, you know, Biden should pick this. We can't fall for that. We've mm -hmm. got to get that out every week that whoever he chooses, we are going to support. Are you with me with that, Grover? Well, you know, uh, yes, I am. Um, but the key is, let us know, you know, what are some things that we can do to show support? Okay. Yes. I think that's more important right now, uh, letting people know whoever he nominates. What are, what can we do uh, to make sure that our voices are heard, and and who do we need to you know talk to? Who do we need to push to? I want to argue that he's already made up his mind. Now he he may vacillate between the two, the his and we remember we discussed this on the show a few weeks ago, and it looked like, I mean, you all may recall what I said. I said he was gonna pick Charles out of South Carolina. And, and when Brown, she was the first runner, and both of those are excellent candidates. Now, I believe he's gonna still pick Charles, but, but I, he may have made a deal with the retired Supreme Court justice to go with Brown because she clerked for him and so if he made the deal, he just going through uh, uh, preliminaries. <laughs> but, but he still owes Clyburn. Mm -hmm. I see, that's where I'm trying to go. Oh, but no, Clyburn like, just said going? today, Clyburn just said today, I, I don't get a president no ultimatum. So he don't let him off the hook. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You see what I'm saying? He, he yeah. believed that that's the right person, but he's saying, I still yield that's a good to move. decision. Yeah. So, 
I think if he he have made his decision, and I think Clyburn knows it, but or he may have made the decision, and Clyburn wanted to let people know I didn't stick a gun to his head to mm -hmm. do this. So mm -hmm. I, it's between those two, I believe. Well, you know, one one of the things um, the the women had come out in Congress and and uh, around the country that uh, especially the leadership. And and the different ones in in the sororities were saying, you know, we not we're not gonna allow them to put our you know the women against each other. We don't want and we don't you know. No, and so so I think it's a good thing that they came out with that statement, and uh, that all of them are more than qualified yeah. than those people that's on there. Uh, you got it's a whole line of of black women who are qualified. Uh, those are just at the very top who are already. On, on the court that we know about, but it's six others down there that are just as qualified. Mm -hmm. And he ought to make his second pick a black woman and replace Clarence Thomas. That's the worst thing could ever happen yeah, to it, black people. He can't replace Clarence Thomas. I, I get him off there. I get him <laughs> off. I, I <laughs> make him get his stuff he <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he said if something happened to him, I know what he said. Hey, hey, the president know how to get you off of there, dog. He just, for some reason, he just didn't wake up. <laughs> hey, y'all, let's talk about Kim, the officer Kim Potter and Dante Wright and, and a two-year sentence. Sinful. You 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 get 30 years for selling dope, you get two years for murdering somebody. That's sinful. Well, well, you have to realize in this country over the years, they're going back to what we talked about earlier with the the the, the devil's punch bowl. We have never been considered, our humanity has never been considered in this country. You know, I, you remember when that, that black guy killed that police dog down there in Fort Walton? He mm -hmm. got 20 some years for that dog, a police dog, a dog. You remember, uh, uh, what's his name, the football player? Football player. He got fighting dogs. Yeah, four years for, for them dogs. And he has never, he, you know, even when he got back in, he had to apologize everywhere, he, every state Michael he went Vick. in, mm -hmm. Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. But the same people, now, the same people will not fight for your life, but they'll fight for a dog. They make laws. These same people that's in Washington, D.C. will make laws for a dog. They'll let you know that your life is less valued than an animal. And the Simmonson guideline was a minimum of seven years. They tried to wiggle and said mm -hmm. six, but the guidelines said a minimum of seven to 10, and it should go up higher because she been on the force for 26 years. It's no right. reason. And then once she shot him, instead of trying to help him, she over the land time I called the union president. Mm -hmm. And they give her 16 months in jail, with with, with six months or 18 yeah. months in jail, with, with six months, Supervised COVID. Mm -hmm. I think you you start saying, "Well, uh, no, I ain't gonna say that." No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, but you know, one of the things that 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 killed me was the judge. Yeah, she, she cried. Crying. You ain't supposed to have no feeling. You up there to be partial. She crying because she got the sentence. Killing a white woman for murder for killing somebody. A murder. <laughs> That's what angered me. You supposed to go by the law. You supposed to be uh, uh, blind. What was right for the goose is right for the gander. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bill, you were interested in this in this particular story. Well, what's your take? Well, my take is what has been the last uh, since forever that uh, America shows us daily how they feel about us. They look at us as less than human. And when the verdict came, it was no surprise to me. Why? Because I say we can't be surprised or dis well, we can be disappointed, but we can't be overwhelmingly shocked when the devil does what the devil does. And this is what the devil does. He kills, steals, destroys. And this is just him in his natural form. But I've stated time and again that Daily, America shows us exactly what we think of them, and we will still rise to the occasion to say that they're overwhelmingly good. Okay, what I still I'm... stand by that, Miss Carol. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I go with James Combs. James Combs said that that James Combs agree with Bill Snowden 
that they the devil, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe they the devil. I think they may have danced with the devil. Uh, may, may went out on a date with him. I don't think the devil because I don't find some good white folk. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but you being the way the good was that I found some. In fact, no, no, white no. People, white Dr. people, Dr. A lot of white people get better you, to me Dr. than Dr. black folk. I you love being, white folk too. You being a man of the cloth should know better than anyone on this panel that the Bible tells us to call no man good. But you <laughs> want to sit there and tell me that they're overwhelmingly good. Okay. All right, let me, let me, let me. Not, I, I, not I, I, good in that Williams. Williams. They are perfect. That's what that term Dr. means, that they are perfect. But watch this. No, I, no, hey, no, okay, I use a better word. Out. They are no. decent. How Dr. about that? You like that word, bro? Right. Bill, they are Dr. decent. Dr. Williams. I we believe they're down. decent, but they're they not know. overwhelmingly decent. Some decent, some they're decent. Not overwhelmingly decent. They're decent. Decent. They're decent. <laughs> not overwhelmingly decent. They are decent. They're overwhelmingly decent. They are not overwhelmingly decent. you. They'll do more for but, you than your let, own let me, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> we are not going to <laughs> debate and argue over whether or not uh, they're good or bad. They're good and bad people in every race. Yes. And, and, bad, and, wait, wait, and it, it, there might be different percentages, mm -hmm. but they're good and bad in every race. Yes, that's and, what I'm trying to and say. No one but you can't I, use good, Miss Carroll. Can I talk? No, can, can I talk? <laughs> can I talk, Dr. Williams and Dr. And, and Mr. Snow? Let me, let me say it, then we're going to move on. Okay? So good and bad in every race. So we cannot uh, judge. Like I want people, a person to judge me for who I am yeah, and yeah. what I do personally. And not for look at me, and we've been we've been fighting for that to look at me and say not look at my color, my skin, but say look at my character and judge me for that. So I don't I don't go with the the black and white. We know all about systematic racism, all the things that happen. But in every step of the way, there have been white people and, and, and people of of color, and other few. people. It's been a few, but they've few. been there. Mm -hmm. Some have died, yeah. and so. Yeah. I agree with both of you, but we have to calm it down. We can't say, uh, and we can never say all. We can never say that because of the fact that they are good and bad in every in every race. But hey, we're gonna move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. Can I say one thing? Oh, no, you cannot because we're going on to, to the last <laughs> subject. No, we're cry, off of that. We're off of that. <laughs> Okay, mute it then, mute it. <laughs> but we're gonna go to uh, 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 Shakira Richardson and what's that, Michaela Bolivia. Yeah, the, uh, the Olympics. And, and, and with the Olympics, because was there a double standard with that? Um, the, talk, to, talk to me a little well, bit about well, that. The, the, the Russian girl that was there, she was um, she was tested she tested positive for enhancement drug, right? Uh, Richardson, who was the uh, last year or year before last, uh, uh, last the, year. she uh, the track and field star. They didn't let her run because she had smoked some marijuana, which is not an enhancement drug. She couldn't even participate in the Olympics, but they allowed this Russian girl who. After they found after she found out probably that she you know she had been doped up with a enhancement drug, she that pressure you know the world was looking at her you know that cause she you know she went there thinking that she was the best skater in the world and then she mm -hmm. failed three times. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it, she would participate. Nobody got their gold because they said if she came out in the number one spot, they weren't gonna uh, give the gold to anybody or they are, um, they are medals to anybody because of it. And that just shows you the double, the, the viciousness of the Olympics. But they always say, oh, it ain't about politics. We are not involved in The Olympics were built on politics from, from day one. The Olympics started way before now. Um, Grove, I'm sure you read about this back in the days of Roman. They, they, would, they would stop wars and pause it for the Olympics. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, she, go ahead, she, go ahead, who, who want to talk no. about? Grover, go ahead. Well, no, I, I was just going to say that um, it was two different bodies. Um, mm -hmm. A secure Richardson problem came 
when she was running to be on the Olympic team out uh, the finals here. Yeah. And so the U.S. Olympic Committee, their doping agency, was the one that pretty much tested that and found those issues and problems. And then this was an Olympic uh, uh, you know, governing committee, doping committee. So, you know, I just wanted to bring those out. Um, it's it, it appeared that, you know, one was using a drug um, that was not uh, performance enhancement and she got knocked back and the other one, you know, was performance enhancement and she was allowed to participate. Um, you know, it's, it's, you would think that the rules could be um, in, 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 in uh, governed or, or imputed in a way that each, each individual um, could be, would be, you know, put in a place where it was the same thing that it would govern, you know, I, I just hate to see her, her, uh, her opportunity of not being able to run as opposed to this young lady who all of a sudden, you know, has, has a performance enhancing drug, but yes, she's able to participate. Yeah. And, and, and I know she's a young, she's, you know, under 18 and everything else, but the rules are the rules. Right, right, absolutely. Okay, well, I got a, a, a Bible verse on our, on our Facebook stream from Samuel X. Clark. It goes, Second Thessalonians 3 said, Let no man deceive you by any means, that the day shall come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Samuel X. Clark on our Facebook stream. All right. Good. No, we, we want to go to uh, our last. We've got about 15 minutes. And we talked about Dr. Williams. You brought that up early in the show about different inventions. And each one of y'all, you might have some inventions that you want, might want to, to, to bring up. But I want to, uh, I found this, uh, uh, these inventions it says unpatent inventions from the peanut. And you know, um, You'll be amazed. I'm just going to read off some of the the, the inventions that that's unpatent. I don't know if they uh, are patent now. Yeah, they uh, patent now. The who who patent <laughs> now? The, the, the whoever stole them for George Washington Carver. <laughs> the, well, the, uh, well, from the peanut, which is uh, George Washington Carver, like I said, adhesive, bleach, buttermilk, cheese, chili sauce, deodorant, flour. Dyes, fuel, ink, instant coffee, liquid corn remover, linoleum, mayonnaise, meal, meat tenderizer, um, uh, pomade. pomade hair oil. I know y'all remember that pomade hair oil. <laughs> uh huh. Um, peanut butter, peanut cake, peanut ice cream, mm -hmm. punch, relish, rubbing oil, salve. A soil conditioner, shampoo, shoe polish, shaving cream, sugar, a talcum powder, wood filler, wood stains, Worcester sauce. All of those things came from the peanut. Synthetic rubble, synthetic marble, all of that. That's, that, that dude was awesome. And the sad part about it to me that Tuskegee should have had all it had to pack, you know, once he passed away, Tuskegee should have got all that. And Tuskegee should be the, the richest, mm -hmm. richest mm -hmm. institution in the country. Mm -hmm. But he, he gave it to the world, you know, but I, I, I think that he should have uh, made some provision for Tuskegee to get that. And I'm sure the pressure was so tough on him at the time, you know, after he invented the fertilizer that, that saved the South, uh, the, the 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 pressure on him probably was so tough that they were going to take it if he didn't share it with the world either way. But uh, Tuskegee should be one of the richest institution in in the in the country from you, all of that stuff. When you leave home right now, if you don't have your cell phone, you feel almost naked now, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Lost. Now, you know who invented the cell phone? Oh, oh yeah, mm -hmm. a young man named Jesse Russell. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesse, but now notice he ain't getting the money for it very much like you saying about uh, 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 the peanut butter, the peanut. He was working for Bell Laboratories. Right. He invented it for them. That's who getting all the money. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, 
That's yeah, like that's just like the, the brother that invented the, the filler for the <laughs> for the light. He was working in uh what was in the Graham Bell's, you know, he Graham Bell yeah. hardly invented anything, mm -hmm. but all the stuff that the people that were working for him invented. He got the credit for it because it was in his institution. Now, isn't that wrong? Do you know cell phones are worldwide? Yeah. Uh -huh. A lot yeah. of people got two cell phones. As soon as you get rid of one, you get another one. And yeah. Okay. And and the money you get from a cell phone, uh -huh. it going to it going to the white folk. It ain't going to that brother uh -huh. or his family or his relative. All that money going to them. I think he get. I think he gets a little royalty. Uh, his some royalty <laughs> from it. I think he gets yeah. some royalty. Yeah, you okay. might get two percent. Uh, yeah, royalty. yeah. Now that's a lot of money. Still, a, yeah. You ought to be getting ninety nine percent. Get in yeah. one percent or two percent. Yeah. Well, see, once you sell that 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 uh, patent, yeah. you know, unless you got some kind of agreement that mm -hmm. okay, I want twenty percent regardless of what what goes down, right. you know. And he probably never thought that it was going to be as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, his vision was, I just want to, you know, I want to make sure that people can take a phone into a restaurant or something. Because, you know, when it first came out, it was it was about this big. It was about, it was about, it was a foot, about a foot wide and a foot long. Mm -hmm. But once they reduced it, that's when it took off. Because we had one, we used to take with us in our car. It was a big phone. <laughs> I had one. And it was a dollar a minute back then, too, mm -hmm. <laughs> to use it. So, well, uh, Gov, you have any invention that you uh, want to bring up? Well, uh, actually, uh, Dr. Marion Croak, uh, who was responsible for this technology that we're using now, mm -hmm. um, voice over internet protocol, uh, Skype, uh, what a bondage and many of you know many of the uh, early uh, phones mm -hmm. that you could being able to call unlimited over uh, over the internet. Uh, she created this technology that allowed it to be. Uh, so we we're on we're on Zoom tonight, and, mm -hmm. and but the technology for video and voice to be to go over the internet was created by our sister, Dr. Marion Croak, uh, who worked for AT and T. Uh, she has over 125 patents. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. You, know, you know, most people don't know that Henry Ford wasn't the first one to build a car. It was a brother in Arkansas. It was a brother in Arkansas mm -hmm. that built him and his son that built stage stagecoach, built the first um, uh, car. And um, Henry Ford, he was friend, I believe, with Henry Ford. And Henry Ford got the 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 patent for the car, the first Ford, he named it after himself and mass produced it. And that's why everybody know about these different cars, but it was a brother that was building stagecoach in Arkansas. So I had a, had a, had a, uh, I believe a re uh, uh, train, didn't he, uh, Grover? Did he have a train? Uh, as, as well as uh, he built carriages. And yeah, he was able carriage, to right. take, yeah, yeah, he was able to put that carriage on, 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 uh, on four wheels, uh, able yeah. to put it on a, Build it for a train track. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember his name right yeah. now. But what's interesting? You mentioned you mentioned Henry Ford, and mm -hmm. um, he was known for the mass production of cars. Mm -hmm. But he got the ideal and the concept uh, for doing that from um, my man from Tuskegee. Yeah. Uh, so you know, uh, <laughs> you know, so you know the plant, you know. Yeah. Uh, the actual plant, you know, so so the peanut guy was was more than just a right. um, you know someone who could do anything with 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 plants. Mm -hmm. uh, he he basically laid out uh, how how Ford should be producing cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, brother Samuel X says the same thing uh, that Henry Ford learned how to produce cars at a faster rate, setting up the plant to maximize production. <laughs> yeah, right. so. The, the, you know everything. Everything that's built is built off of you know off the backs of black people and out of the mind of black people. Actually, yeah. Henry Ford visited Tuskegee where Carver was residing and actually put a elevator in the dorm that he was living in once he was getting older in age. They were pretty good friends. Have you all had the opportunity to go visit Tuskegee Institute? If if very you there. You ought to go when you when you when you drive up on the campus 
they got this whole like cemetery, this whole yeah. area for the Washington family. It's probably 15 or 20 of them that's in that cemetery. And they got, they got, I think they got uh Carver up under this tree with a bench on it with his everything. But but just think about the gas mask. You know the gas mask that we use yeah. to oh, yeah. in the war? You know who invented that? Oh you know, yeah. By the name of Gary Morgan. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. think about that. Do you know how many lives were saved when they putting chemicals out there? You can put on a gas mask and you can uh, deduct from that that this mask that we're using to protect uh from this coronavirus come from that concept, how it can filter out uh those those harbor integents and you can survive. Now that's that's got to be a brain. Yeah. Well, we were, you know, what I'm saying is that's why I said going back to when we before we were brought here, we was already building civilization. We yeah. was already doing that. We would build, we had running water, we had all kinds of stuff that was taking place. And they knew that. That's why we were brought here. We weren't brought here because we couldn't do nothing. Yeah. We was already farming. We was already growing. We, you know, the rice mm -hmm. that they put the women put in their braids to bring here. You know that. So, so all of this was we was already doing. But that's and why they didn't they want, us here. want the slave to speak their native language because if they could have talked to one another in their native language, they could have done so much more. They forbid you to speak your native language. And they forbid them to read, to mm -hmm. learn how to speak the new language. Right. Well, well, we have, you know, Vernon, who's our host, who's not here to, uh, to, on the show tonight, but he is watching evidently because <laughs> he has a couple of comments. And one of the things that he says, don't call him. Now, someone uh, had to call him the peanut man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He said his name is Dr. George Washington Carver. Like and that's, that, that's with the respect mm. for him. Mm. And yeah. his name is Carver uh, uh, and not Carter. Mm. And so that tells us He's watching mm -hmm. and, and, uh, participating, and participating and give due respect to these genius and give due respect mm -hmm. to them. That's what he and said. It might have been me who said it. At, but it probably would be on though, but it might have been. <laughs> oh, I said Oh, yeah, that. You, you, I, you said that. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know who I said could, it. I, we, I, I, but I, I get it. I said moment. some stuff. You know, I you know I had a brain freeze for a moment, but he's right, <laughs> and, and and not to uh, yeah. not to downgrade Dr. Carter. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dr. Car uh, Carver, by Carver. any means, excuse me, uh -huh. uh, you know, I mean, the man was pure genius to be able to take uh, so little and do so much uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. and impact, impact the uh, impact world. science as well as the world yeah. as he did. Oh, uh, uh, Brother Clark said Frederick Douglass Patterson is who we are talking about, the brother that invented yes. the cars and yes. all of that. Yeah. Yes. Well, if we still go back to uh, George Washington Carver, uh, he invented cosmetics, mm -hmm. and it says January 6, 1925. And, and he had a patent, and he had a patent on paint and stains in the process, mm -hmm. June 9, 1925. And he also had a, a process of producing paint, which he patented June 14, 1927. So the paint that we have on the walls all came from someone uh, yeah. black. So do you know who invented blood plasm to put in their little bags? Yeah, yeah. Charles yeah. Drew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you know what he died from? Lack of blood. <laughs> he oh. blood he bled. Yeah, running. <laughs> that, that, that. You know, everywhere you go, you see these blood mobiles. Uh -huh. Give blood. Give blood. Mm -hmm. Brother did that. But who get credit for it? Well, you know, when, when you got to freeze the blood, I mean, keep the blood cool, cool on these trucks. Mm -hmm. It was a brother that invented that, the, the free to refrigerated truck. Mm -hmm. It was a brother that invented that. But Jerry, you know what I just thought about? And I know this this Miss Carol going to shoot at me. She, you always running off the rail. You won't stay. I, I wouldn't have been a good slave because I won't stay on the platform. I won't stay on the plantation. I'll bust up out of there. But but watch this. You still yeah. on the plantation. <laughs> But watch this here. Watch this here. Any area where you allow the black woman or the black man to participate equally, we will not only arise to the occasion, we will supersede it in every facet of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, you all, um, 
Uh, 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 no, I'm not on the plantation. He's still, he still tried to uh, 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 send it. He wants me to, to, to talk. I'm just going to say what he's, what he's written you all so y'all can respond. But he said, uh, the air conditioning, and I have that here, and he's right about that. And I don't want to get into one of the things he talked about because <laughs> that was for Dr. Snow and Dr. Williams to start all over again. So I'm not even going to bring that up. I'll be quiet. Okay. You can let I'm him have the rest of the way. He right now. Catch He's up. looking at the show. <laughs> we'll uh, that up, I'm not going to bring that up. We did that for another time. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we've got about uh, two, well, five, four minutes left. And I want to say it's been a wonderful, wonderful show. Does anyone else have anything? We're going to continue you to uplift the african-american people we're going to continue to empower our community and to hopefully uh let them hear something or learn something that they didn't know before uh through watching community conversations and our voices and we have a powerful host team here dr isaac williams y'all I want to say you all probably were looking at the show and saying, gosh, my goodness. But y'all have to realize that on our show, mm -hmm. we have passionate people. We have passionate people. And we believe what we believe and we have facts and we do also have opinions. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that we love each other on yeah, our I show. I love you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wayne. <laughs> uh, and but uh, uh, we also are strong minded people strong will people with convictions, but we all have one goal to make sure that we empower our, our people and, 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 and our next generations, like Jerry said, generations to generations. Jerry always say about generation upon generation. That's our goal and our mission. And, Karen, have, and I commend you for being able to keep all these, what they call them, A personalities. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word when the alpha dogs all these right, right. <laughs> and, and and that those are the people that are, are workers and doers and and strong names. Those are the type of people we need. We need the alpha dog. Uh, if you want to say alpha cats, or that's the word. <laughs> we, we need all of that, you know, to empower ourselves. We can't con continue to worry about someone else. We've got to empower ourselves. Grover, you said we've got to empower ourselves. And, I and if any of you all need me, I don't care what Bill Snow said. I ain't on the plantation, and I'll be there to help you. All you got to do is let me know. Okay. I'll all right. let me, let me Jerry. I want to um, remind people of this book, The Philosophy and Opinion of Marcus Garvey. This is a great book. Mm -hmm. uh, also, yeah, also, the assassination of the black male, if you can see that, is the uh, the black male image. And that it's telling you that our um, image has been already assassinated, has awesome. been shot around the world mm -hmm. through that. And then justice denied the black man's in, in white America. This this is a good book. And lastly, uh, Black Rage. But it's, it's not just about black rage. It's about uh, the the issues that we have to address and deal with and how it affects us day to day, both mentally and physically. And, and, and really, our shows are, are, are so compassionate because we're, we're tired. You know, when we talk on our shows and we go way back before slavery and then we go up to slavery, up until now, constantly fighting, constantly toiling, trying to just have equal access. Just have equality, just have justice. And, and and it's frustrating. But we're going to talk about it. CRT is not going to stop us. Nothing can stop us from, from explaining well, the history and what's really happened in America. Yeah, and, and the community conversation is gonna be about black history because people have to know. They have to know who we are, where we came from before slavery. Our history didn't start as slavery. We was here hundreds of thousands of years before slavery, before uh, time. We, we've been here for time and time and time and a half. So we are here and we're gonna be up on this planet. We are the original people of the planet. And we have to come to understand that. And this is why the rest of the world hate us so much because you can't get 
the dominant from from the for, from, yeah from mm -hmm. the recessive. We are the dominant people, no matter what. That's why they told you if you get one drop. Now that's powerful. If you get one drop, you black. <laughs> this this is this is the scenario that they put. You might pass for white, but if you got one drop, you black. But remember uh, the twins that were born in Europe, the white guy. The white guy thought his wife had cheated on him, but they had one black twin, one white, twin, one white. One. Come to find out, he was the ancestor. I mean, he was the wow. the, 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 the 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 he was the generation down about four generations down from Africa. <laughs> he didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. But that one drop came out when when uh, when him and his wife met, even though she was white. But that dominant white drop, I mean, black drop came out and there was a black twin and a white twin. And they, and they ain't the only one. It's, I think it's been about four or five of them since then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Bill, write that down. That's a good show a, mm -hmm. uh, title, One Drop, because we mm -hmm. need to talk about that, mm -hmm. One Drop. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Hey, it's been a good show. Yeah. We uh, are mm -hmm. glad to have you. Grover, we're glad to have you back on tonight. Mm -hmm. I hope you continue back with on. us. Mm -hmm. You know, Grover kind of sits back and kind of looks, and he probably said, my goodness, you know, <laughs> Bill Snow and Dr. Williams have been hosting for a long time. We've been all <laughs> A long time. Miss <laughs> Carol. Miss Carol. Me, me and Grover go don't way back. He just playing like that. We go way back. <laughs> oh, okay. He playing that role. Okay. Don't leave us, though. We need you. We need your input. We need your voice. With that, y'all, we're going to say good night. Appreciate y'all. Okay. Good night, y'all. Good, good night, everybody. See y'all Sunday.